Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Ideo preco, Beata Maria, Semper Virginem, Beata Michaela, Marca Angelum, Beata Joan, Baptista, Sanctus Apostolos, Petrum et Paulum, Omnis Sanctus et Vos Fratres, Orare Prome ad Dominum Deum Nostrum. Morning. I'm James Kinsella. Father James Kinsella. Ah, come off it. What? Look, we came for a priest. I'm sorry I can take no less. Sorry no. I am a priest. I'm the man you came for. Panic! Panic! The storm coming up? It is. Well, we better get started then. Here you go. Hey, hello. Well, look, what's the matter? You want to see my papers or something? Here, get your hand off that. What? I tell you I'm a priest, a follower. Oh, no, that's come on now. Water. Confounded man, what's wrong with you? Will you let oh, me you in that boat? Oh, a priest, go over there. I am a priest. Your father abbot is expecting me. Will you come back here, please? Have you been to Ireland? Yes, I have, Father General, very near where this abbey is. So you have some idea of what's in store for you. Fanatic monks, what sort of dialogue could one possibly have? With men like that. Well, we do have some things in common, sir. <laughs> what, for instance? Well, we're priests, and we're all members of the same monastic order. Mm -hmm. 
I wonder, does this abbot believe that? What do you mean, sir? I mean that the church today is like the early Christian church, revolutionary. And this abbot belongs to the church we have left behind. But we're all men who desire to serve God, sir. It's what used to be called a vocation. <laughs> you're, you're quite right. <laughs> we all have that in common. In any event, vocation or not, I don't propose to send you into a contest of faith with some wild-eyed holy man. I will give you the power that you need. Well, speaking of power, sir, what about the Father Provincial in Dublin? Oh, we've tried that. The Provincial has already made suggestions to the abbot on four different occasions. But as you know, the abbots are no longer bound to obey the orders of Provincials. However, he cannot ignore mine. I will give you total authority on this mission. Whatever you decide will be the Order's final edict. The obstinate abbot of Mort. Let's see, let's see. He is one of Thomas O'Malley now in his 69th year, the son of a, of a greengrocer. What is a greengrocer, James? Uh, that's a seller of vegetables, Father General. A, um, Verde. Ah, Verduraio. <laughs> yes. He is the product of an Irish seminary, prize winner in Latin, a uh, doctorate in, uh, mm -mm. can't read this, ten years at Buckmore Abbey in England, then cast down on this remote little Irish island at a comparatively early age. It would seem the order had no great hopes of him. There's a lot more. Read it over at your leisure. Hmm? <sighs> the Latin Mass. I'd rather like to see one again, wouldn't you? I must confess, sir, I really don't remember it. Don't you? The priest with his back to the congregation. The vestments. Introibo ad altare dei. And the bell and the sanctus. Ita misa est. How can one forget? And now, that old mass is packing tourists in over there in Ireland. Charter flights from London, Boston, Los Angeles, pilgrimages from France, Germany, even, even Bella Italia. <laughs> I wonder how long it would have gone on if it hadn't been discovered by the television people. I think it's a cliche to say it was to be expected. Even Vatican IV cannot bury 2,000 years in a few decades. I'd have thought Spain, but no. Portugal, no. What? Ireland, of course. One is always blind to the obvious. Well, here you are. I suggest you hop a supersonic tonight and go straight over to Amsterdam to the Ecumenical Council Center. Mm. Just a formality, but in an affair of this kind, everything should be strictly kosher. Right, sir. And after Amsterdam, you go straight over to Ireland. Remember, I want this settled by the end of the week. Yes, sir. Get that old fool down off that mountain, James. And if he gives you any trouble, Fight him. <laughs> change, I would say. I hope. Listen, could you help me, please? I want to telephone Mork Island. Are you generous, sir? I don't like to bother the monks during the week. God help them, they have enough to do on a Sunday when they come over for the mass. It's all right. I'm a priest. They're expecting me. Good day, Good day Father. Father. Good day. Ah, Sheila? 
Could you get us Mark Island? No, it's for a priest. What, sir? Are you the priest from Rome, Father? I am. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Father Kinsella here. I say, Father Kinsella here. Is that better? Yes, look, I want you to send the boat. I say, can you send the boat back? Your man refused to take me. What? No, he didn't know I was a priest. Listen, I've got to get there today. Hello? 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 We've been cut off. It's a bad connection at the best of times. You could try it again later if you like. So Padre refused to take you across, eh? Well, that's a good one. You know, the islanders out there are like the monks themselves. They don't know that times have changed. Are you an American, Father? Yes, I am. Ah, grand country. Tell me something. What if the sea's too rough and the monks can't come over from the island? Then there's no mass on Mount Coon. No mass. But what if the tourists that come all this way, what do they do if there's no mass? Ah, that's a grand thing to see. The pilgrims stay up there on the mountain praying and waiting. Ah, oh, they'd be nice people. When the abbot put up a notice saying that confession was only for the local parishioners. You know, the, the tourists obeyed him. Confession? Ah, there's a lot of work for the monks. After a mass, the three of them at it down there till it's time for the boat to go back. But why does confession take so long? The private confessions. One person at a time in the confession box. Uh, the old way. Well, what about public confessions? Where the whole congregation stands before the mass and receives absolution together. Ah, that never took here. Well, it took everywhere else. I'm sorry. How much do I owe you for the phone? That's all right, Father. Thank you. Now yeah, use your phone again. Certainly, Father. Thank you. Could you draw me a beer, please? Have you ever been on the island before? No, just thrown over. in the glass jars and the red kerns in the stone pots. Or was it the other way about, Father Abbott? Blackberries jars. <laughs> so I was right. Well, will you come down yourself now and take a look at the fruit? We have a visitor. No, should the boat came back empty and no other boat could come in this weather. Look. Oh, it's that flying thingamajig from Dingle. I've seen him passing over here many's the time. Is he broke down or what? Did you not hear it come in a minute ago? Uh, sure, how could I? And I down in the cat factory room, picking the stems off the berries. Oh, that's not the priest from Rome, surely. I should say it is. Hmm? You're supposed to have to wear special clothes to go up in one of them things. Now, go on now, Paul. Tell Brother Martin to send the visitor up. I'll do that, Father Abbott. Carry your bag, Father. All right. Carry right on up to the top, Father. All right, thank you. Mind the last steps uneven, Father. It wouldn't do to trip Rome up, would it? How are you? Fine, thanks. Good to meet you, Father Abbott. I'm James Kinsella. Uh, Padraig left you at the pier. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. 
seems he mistook you for a reporter. And you've been having lots of them, I'm told. But you came on your own anyway. Enterprising. Do you know that's the first flying machine ever to land on Morgoyne? Until now, it's as if we'd missed the century. Would you have preferred that? Preferred what? To have missed this century. To have been born in another time. I should think not. Under the English, unless you had a lust to be a martyr, it was not a time to be a Catholic priest in Ireland. Of course, I forgot. Oh, this is my ecumenical order of mission, and this letter is for you from Father General. Father General? This is a very special day. I've been an Albanesian monk for 45 years, yet this is the first time I've ever had a letter signed by our Father General. A pity it has to be a letter of censure. But it's not meant as such, I can assure you. Well, the tone is firm. In conclusion, I will only say that while Father Kinsella is with you to hear explanations, be it understood, his decision is mine and as such irrevocable. That sounds as if I'm in hot water. <laughs> cup of tea? No, thank you. Are you weary? Martin, bring us a cup of tea. Cold tea. I'd just like to have another look at this, if I may. Of course. Do you have a television here? Well, sometimes when something big's going on in the world, we draw lots and five of us bicycle down to Doran's in the village. He has the television. Only five, mind. It's a small place. You know, of course, that the mass your monks say over on the mainland was shown on a television program two months ago. Indeed we do. Haven't we heard of nothing else ever since? Who would have thought the Latin mass could still be so popular? That program has been seen and discussed by millions of Catholics all over the world. You don't, have. Here's your tea, Father Abbott. Thank you, Martin. Would you like an egg with that? No, no. We're having salmon for supper. Salmon? Yes, salmon. If Father Manus can find us a few in the ocean pool. It's an occasion, Martin. Father can sell us come all the way from Rome. This bread is our own baking. Irish soda bread. I hope you like it. Thank you. Poor Martin, he's getting on. We all are here. Last year, I said to Father Matthew, he's our master of novices, Matthew, I said, when you retire, we'll retire the job with you. But not one recruit did I see coming along. But now, after that television program, I could find enough recruits to fill a regiment. I suppose that's a relief. No, it is not. You're not anxious for new recruits? I am not. It's a hard life on this island, fishing, drying kelp. Oh, farming for a few potatoes, it rains a lot. And the monastery's cold. There's no way of heating it properly. And we often find it difficult to make ends meet. But isn't that the thing about hardship? I mean, uh, men will accept it if they feel it's for a worthwhile cause. Just so. But the monastic life, as you know yourself, Father, is it's often something different. I'd break all clergy into two groups myself. Proselytizers or prayers. Or, if you like, missionaries or monks. But monks can also be missionaries, surely. Not on Mork Island. It takes a special vocation to live in a place like this. Not many have it. I do not have it myself, I sometimes think. You've lived on this island most of your life, no? That does not mean to say I like it. You prefer to be somewhere else? I did not say that. Of course not. I'm sorry. Missionary type myself. 
I've always wanted to go to South America. To be one of Father Hartman's revolutionaries overthrowing the government? You've heard. Oh, it was Father Gustav Hartman, a fine man. He is. He was my teacher. In South America? No. No, I studied with him in Boston. He's crippled now, you know. No, I did not know. Yes, the Brazilian militarists tortured him so many times that they finally broke his back. I should like to meet him. What sort of thing does he teach in those classes of his? Well, he believes that the church is now the perfect structure through which social revolution can be brought to certain underdeveloped areas of the world, and he shows how it can be done. Tell me, does he talk much about God? In what way do you mean? Oh, I don't know. Forget it. No, go on, please. Well, what I mean is, is it souls he's after, or is it the good of mankind? say the second. I gathered as much. Well, of course, I'm not much up on those things. I was never one for the missionary impulse myself. But your zeal for the old mass, your continuance of the Latin ritual here, surely that could be interpreted as missionary spirit? I thought you'd get wrong with that. Now, come on, let's go out. See if Manus has caught the salmon for our supper. You'll stay the night? Well, uh, we've got a lot to talk about. We do. What did you tell the man with the helicopter? If I ring, he can be here in an hour. Well, call him in the morning then. Come on. Mind the step now. I know. We don't want to trip up wrong. Good day. Hello. Well, there I would say. Hi. Well, clear. Where's Father Manners? I hear tell he's looking for a couple of fish. <laughs> Well, then, let's go see what he's got. He said the mass when the television people came. When he catches salmon, he puts him in that pool there. And then when the boat goes to the mainland, we sell them. They fetch a good price, too. So it's a special treat tonight, eating salmon ourselves. It's things like that. It's the little things that keeps us going here. The jam in our lights. He's a shy man. When the telly people tried to talk to him, he couldn't speak. He's dying to talk to you, though, I warn you. Still, that's what you're here for, isn't it? Explanations? Wasn't that what the Father General called them? <laughs> ah! We have our fish! Well, now, Father Abbas. What about these? How do they do? Yes, I think they'll huh? do. I think they'll do nicely. And this is Father Kinsella, all the way from Rome. Our champion fisherman, Father Manus. Father, glad to know you. Oh, from Rome. I... So you're the man from Rome? Yes. I'd, I'd never have thought. <laughs> Why? What were you expecting? Well, I don't know. I, I was expecting somebody a, a bit older. You know, more the sergeant major type. And, and Italian. You're not Italian. You're American, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, well, well. well I'm, I'm delighted to, to meet. Well, no, no, I'm not delighted at all because we don't know what you're going to do here, do we? Uh, you hold your tongue now, man. Yeah. Hold your tongue. Uh, you know, when he was a little boy, they told him it was a sin to tell a lie, and I don't think he's told one since. <laughs> but seriously, Father, I'd love to have a bit of a talk with you sometime because, you know, what's been happening here Quite astonishing. Yes, yes. Well, I think that mm. uh, we'd better go inside if you want to have a word with the father. Uh, yeah. Come now, let's go. Mm. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we, we can't bring that with us as well, should we? Can. <laughs> Good man, yes, sir. Ah. Uh, 
Now, Alice, here's a chance. Get at it. Yes. What are you going to say? Yeah, what's this? I was going to say, um... I don't know, I've forgotten what I was going to say, but I can tell you this much. I, I haven't had a wink of sleep since I heard you were coming. Look. It's as plain as the nose on your face. I mean, we, we did nothing to start all this. We've been going over to the mainland and saying mass every Sunday, the way we always did. In Latin. The way we were brought up to say it. With the, the priest and the people facing the altar. You see. Not fa facing God, you could say, because there's the priest changing the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. The way Jesus told his disciples at the Last Supper. This is my body, this is my blood. Do ye this in commemoration of me. You see, you see God sent his son on this earth and he died for us, he died for our sins. And that's what the Mass is all about, you see. I mean, it's just that, a commemoration of his death. And it was always in Latin, because Latin is the language of the church, and the church is universal. I mean, if a, a fellow could drop into a church anywhere in the world, anywhere, and hear the very self-same Mass, the Latin Mass, the only Mass that ever was, and the fact that it was in Latin, well, that was part of the mystery, because you, you, I mean, you weren't just talking to your neighbour, you were talking to Almighty God, you see. Anyway, that's the way we've been doing it for the past 2,000 years. It's, well, just on 2,000 years. Oh, it's a mystery. Of course it's a mystery. But, I mean, well, what you're giving us now, there's no mystery about that at all. I mean, it's only a mockery as far as I'm concerned. Uh, a sing song, because you're not talking to Almighty God, you're talking, you're talking to your neighbour, and that's why it's in English. Or German, or Chinese, or whatever, well, whatever kind of language you want to use in the church. <laughs> I mean, it's an entertainment, that's all it is. And, of course, the people see through it, of course they do. And that's what has them coming here to Coombe Mountain. If you could only see those people, bareheaded, with the rain pelting off their faces, when they see that piece of bread that becomes the body and blood of Christ, through the mystery and the miracle of the Mass. And you wouldn't want to sweep all that away, sure you wouldn't. To put in its place what? Well, what you had put in its place, all this guitar playing and, and singing and, and <laughs> turning around and touching your neighbour and all that sort of cardiology. Uh, for no other reason than to bring people into the church, the way we used to bring them into the parish hall for a game of bingo. I <laughs> know. Hmm. I wish I had all that conviction, Manus. You see, we've a lot of sermons in us here in the back of beyond. Yes, but I uh, see what, I, what I'm saying. I mean, it, it's the God's truth. The abbot will bear me out. I don't know what God's truth is, do any of us. If we did, there'd be no arguments between us. Well, would there? Hmm. No. I suppose not. Well, well and, but, and it reminds me, there's nothing personal in me, you understand? Oh, of course, Father, I know that. I appreciate uh, hearing your point of view. You do. <sighs> I found the lamb. Oh, good man, you said. Where was it? Lying in Collins' old barn, oh. right against a pony. Yeah, and the pony didn't mind. A <laughs> double of bits. There's a power of prayer for you. Oh, it took more than prayer. It took the whole day. Well, <laughs> we'll see you at supper. Come, I'll show you our church. <clears throat> Little sister will Say, uh, you were in Rome at the time of Pope John, weren't you, mm. that time you were ill? I was not ill. I went on a holiday to England, and then on to the shrine at Lourdes, and then on to Rome. Where did you hear that I was ill? It's Irish Romanesque. Twelfth century, isn't it? Beautiful, isn't it? Yes. 
There are advantages to being in a backwater. This is one of the few abbeys in Ireland that escaped being almost entirely destroyed by Cromwell. And by Henry. You studied at Buckmore Abbey in England, didn't you? Yes. That's a beautiful place. It is. Have you ever thought of asking for a transfer? A transfer? To some place less remote. Could be arranged, you know. <laughs> all the abbots of Mark are buried here. Fifty-one of them all laid down like bottles of wine. God willing, I'll be fifty-two. Ah, uh, a stupid ambition, but I have it. It's funny. But this place is no summer resort, but every time I take to the mainland, I will not sleep there if I can get back in. Uh, I feel at home here. I feel at home nowhere else. What if you were ordered to another monastery? By whom? Father General, of course. I hope. I would hope. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All earth thy scepter hold. All in heaven above adore thee. you to our guest house. Have supper at seven. I'll pick you up at six thirty. Okay. Mm. John. Father. Father Colum. How do you do? Father Kevin. This is Father Kinsella from our mother house in Rome. Father Terence, in charge of our farm here. How do you do, Father? Brother Alphonsus. Brother. Did you come all the way from Rome in that flying machine? <laughs> no. Did you hear what Brother Alphonsus wants to know? That's a helicopter, Alphonsus. It couldn't fly all the way from Rome. <laughs> Father Daniel. Father. Uh, Father Matthew, our master of novices. What novices? I'm Jack of all trades and master of none. Oh, hardly so. This is Father Kinsella from Rome. I know he's from Rome. Indeed, we all do. You are here because of the wonderful response to our masses in the mainland. Did you know that we had six charter flights from Boston and New York last month? Brother, Brother Paul. Brother. Uh -huh. You were saying, Father. I was saying that I hope that you will not try to change our ways. What do you mean? The mass, Father. I will be honest with you. It would be a crime if we were prevented from doing this holy work. I think we'll eat. Ah, my deputy, Father Walter. Father Walter. Oh, well, <laughs> Father Kinsella, now you sit on my right, and uh, Walter, you sit on his other side. Then he'll be surrounded by the more kind of establishment. Oculi omnium in te speranto. Et tu, 
Sestem Adorum in Tempore Artuna. Benedict Domine Nos, et heic tua dona, quid et tua lagitate, sumus sumturi, per Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen. Amen. Agibus tibi gratias, omnipotens Deus, pro universis beneficiis tuis, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. Amen. Amen. May we have a word with you, Father? Your father, Kinsella, and I have much to discuss. We'll go up to my parlor now for a cup of tea. Well, we haven't had a chance to meet our visitor. Affairs of state, Father, work before play. This way, please. May I not just ask him one thing? Good night, Father Matthew. They get excited. You know what they call you? The Inquisitor. <laughs> I'm hardly that. That's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> but what if you have a case of heresy on your hands? As the General's man, you have the power to act against us, don't you? Oh, look. This is the end of the 20th century, not the beginning of the 13th. I mean, how can we even define a case of heresy today? I'll define this one for you. Yesterday's orthodoxy is today's heresy. But Father Abbott, we're merely trying to create a uniform posture within the church. If everybody decides to worship in his own way, obviously that will create disunity. Hmm. And a dish of tea. All right. Milk and sugar. No, black's fine, thank you. All right. Explanations, as the Father General calls them. Where shall I begin? Did you know Ireland was the only country in the world where, once upon a time, every Catholic went to Mass of a Sunday? Everyone. Even the men. That's impressive. <laughs> Until the time of Pope John, that was, when the new Mass came in. Well, we were like everybody else. We obeyed orders, went over to the mainland, and said the new Mass in English. And the people stopped coming to church. Oh, some women. But the men and the boys stood outside smoking. So I was worried. I said to the monks, what on earth are we doing if we cannot persuade the people to come back into the church? It's the priest's job to keep their faith in Almighty God, and I don't want to tamper with their faith. So I decided we'd go back and say the old mass in the old way, and, well, that's the whole story. Well, hardly. This spring, you had 20 charter flights from Europe alone, plus pilgrimage groups from the United States and Canada, so large, in fact, that no church could hold the crowds. So you set up shop on a big scale up on Coombe Mountain, which in Cromwell's time was associated with rebellion. Mass was said in secret by outlawed priests, with some member of the congregation as lookout. Mm. Yet that was a mistake, but at the time, I didn't see the connection. I just wanted to accommodate the crowds. <sighs> but you accepted a gift of loudspeakers from the local merchants here. The people couldn't hear the service. It's customary to accept gifts that aim at enhancing worship. And uh, private confessions, Father Abbott. Is that another accommodation? The people here are very conservative. But you know as well as I that private confessions are no longer permitted, except in cases where the sin is so grave that special counsel is required. But what am I to do? The people here still think it's a special sin to molest a child or take another man's wife, all that sort of thing. What am I to do if the people still believe that sin is mortal to the soul? I know it must be difficult for you to accept, Father Abbott, but the idea of Catholics confessing their sins to a priest in private is very distasteful to other groups within our ecumenical brotherhood. And now that the new and easier form has been sanctioned by Vatican IV, well, you've read the debate, surely. Yes, agreed. I know I'm out of step, but that's not the reason why you're here. You know why I'm here. You know what's happening here. 
Mount Coombe has become a place of international religious pilgrimage. You mean a sort of Lourdes? As Lourdes was before it was closed down, yes. We're not like Lourdes. There are no miracles here. You went there once, didn't you? A long time ago, yes. After Lourdes, when you journeyed on to Rome, you asked for a meeting with our spiritual director there. You said that what you'd seen at Lourdes had caused you to have some religious doubts? It's a long time ago. It's irrelevant to this discussion. Well, there could be a connection. Some men compensate for former doubts by an excessive devotion. There is a file on me in Rome? Well, the order tries to keep complete personnel records. You know that. Listen, I'll be frank. We've just learned that now an American network is planning a special program on your mass here, and Father General is very worried. So that's it. Well, why didn't you say so? I can ban the telly people, no <laughs> trouble at all. Even the President of the United States can't ban American television. I can refuse to have them filming on holy ground. No. If you do that, you may lend this a significance you never intended. You see, what's happening here is being interpreted by some commentators as the first stirrings of a Catholic counter-revolution. Ah, uh, sure, that's nonsense. The church is one body, Father Abbott. What one part does affects the whole. How I envy you. It must be rewarding to be like you, to feel you can change something in a world like ours. Next month, the first World Congress of Christian and Buddhist faiths will meet in Bangkok, and Father General has been chosen as president of that meeting. Now, any scandal about our order at this time could be fatal to the success of that meeting. A powerful faction is already in opposition. The Punji demonstrations in Singapore last month were the beginnings of that opposition. Now, do you see what I'm talking about? All I see is that because some Congress is going on at the other end of the world, we have to give up the old mass here on Mount Coombe. It makes you wonder, what does the mass mean nowadays? In Rome, what does it mean? Well, religion has been opened up everywhere. The individual conscience is very important. Things are much more free. Free, did you say? Look, you are an abbot with the powers of a bishop. I needn't explain the importance for the seniors in our order to act in concert and set an example. I asked you a question about the Mass. I don't think you answered me, Father. The Vatican maintains that it's no longer obligatory for Catholics to believe that the bread and wine on the altar are actually changed into the body and blood of Christ, except symbolically. I mean, it's no longer necessary to think of God as actually being present there in the tabernacle. So, a man doesn't need a big dose of faith anymore? I'm sorry? Nothing. So, unless I abandon the Latin mass, I will be disciplined, is that it? I wish you wouldn't put it quite that way. Well, what other way is there to put it? I'd like to know what powers you have. Well, uh, in, shall we say, a situation of deadlock, I am empowered to order your immediate transfer and to install an acting abbot in your place. <laughs> Sounds like the old days. There's a great deal at stake here, Father Abbot. I hope we won't be forced to invoke such serious measures. I hope so, too. You don't seem to be well up on the new ecumenical rule of the World Council of Churches, Father. The rule? If I choose to appeal to the Amsterdam Council, I cannot be transferred until the appeal is heard. That might take several months. In the meantime, there'd be a lot of publicity. Possibly. I might even become the first martyr in that counter-revolution you were talking about. I am sorry I overlooked the question of a, an appeal to the Ecumenical Council. Well, if I were in your shoes, maybe I'd have done the same thing myself. Hmm. However, as I do have that leeway... Excuse me, Father Abbott. When may I hope to have an answer for Father General? We'll talk about that tomorrow. Martin, I'll show you to your quarters. Father Robert? Martin, Father Kinsella's going to bed. 
Bring a light along for the road. He's not a night cat like yourself. Yeah, do that, Father. I didn't eat the biscuits, then. Try a lemon puff. They're first class. Thank you. I'll pick you up at eight. Good night. Good night, Father. Oh, Father Consola? Yes? There's a telephone call for you. Oh, yeah. thank you. It's all right, Martin. I'll take him back. Thank you, Kevin. Oh, it's Weston Helicopters. Your pilot calling from Dinkle. Thank you. Hello, Kinsella here. Yes, Father. I called earlier. There's a hell of a storm moving up from the coast of Spain. Unless you get out tomorrow morning, you can be locked in for days. I see. Well, uh, look, I don't know when I can leave here. Tell you what, I'll call you before 9 tomorrow morning. Can you be ready to come in if I give the word? Surely, Father. Grant, I'll see you soon, I hope. Thank you for calling. Uh, do priests from Rome not dress like priests anymore? Oh, no. They're only on special occasions. You're one of those new priests, aren't you? The revolutionaries. Are you interested in that? Tell me, is it true? In South America, some priests are overthrowing the government. Yes, they are. How can they be doing the likes of that? Why not? The early Christians were revolutionaries, remember? What has that got to do with saving souls for God? Everything. You know that in places like South America, young priests our age are dying for the causes of social justice? But what are they doing being priests? You know, if I wanted to join the IRA, I'd have joined the IRA. But I joined the church. So the church can be a powerful instrument of change. It can lead a revolution that people will follow. We have enormous influence. Okay. You know, that's trite. Look at the people over there on the mainland. They don't want your social justice. They want the old mass. They want to believe in something. Something more than this world can offer them. Now, what do you offer, Father? Well, perhaps a better life, Father, not pie in the sky. Oh, but you're a priest. That's not your job. They want you to forgive them their sins. To baptize them, marry them, bury them. To show them there's a God above them, a God who cares about them. Well, the old parish priest knew that. You don't. Now, I'm afraid you're wrong. You're out of step. Unless we alter our image, we'll lose the people. Times have changed. Yes, they have. And you and the likes of you are destroying the church, in my opinion. <laughs> well, what, may I ask, do you know about it, Father? You're stuck away here in this godforsaken island. What do you know about what's happening out there in the world? You know, I do have eyes in my head. I see the people on Mount Coombe on a Sunday morning. I've, I've seen them myself, of them. Father. Oh, you didn't know you had visitors. Is it my turn? Yes. I'll just spell here for you. I'm supposed to see Father Kinsella to his quarters. Oh, no, no. Look, if you have some work to do, don't let me hold you up. I can find my way back. No, it's not work. I'm going to the church. We're praying all night to save the mass. I see. And, uh, who are we? Some of the monks. That's our way of trying to change things. Prayer. May I come with you? Why not? So you're in on this. 
You have good news for us, I hope, Tomas. I have no news. I asked you a question. Yes. I am the ringleader. Oh, no, you're not. Adding a lie to your sins will not help whatever foolish aim you have in mind. Well, you know very well what I have in mind. It's what we all have in our minds. Is it? Do you know my mind? But asking God's help isn't a sin. Breaking the law of obedience is. Tomas, you aren't going to be vexed with us, are you? I'm very disappointed in you, Walter. Now, I want you to go out there and get them all off to bed at once. So our prayers have been answered. There will be nothing of the sort. We've work to do here in the fields and in the abbey. The mackerel are running. I want the nets up. We live by work here. I've told you a hundred times we're not a contemplative order. But this is a case where only the power of prayer can help. You cannot run a monastic community like a holiday camp, Walter. People taking it into their heads to stay up half the night without as much as a buyer or with your leave. I asked everyone here to behave as usual while this visitor was here. I'm very disappointed, Walter. I am at fault, Father Abbott. Mm, but you're not the ringleader, so there's no use pretending you are. You are my deputy. And as my deputy, if you cannot obey orders, where am I? I'm sorry, Tomas. I'll get them off to bed. God bless you. Father Abbott says we must leave. Father Abbott says we must leave. And I want no holy vigils in cells, do you hear? The holiest thing every man jack of you can do is to turn out fit to work in the morning. Father Matthew. Uh, Father Abbott. Where are the others? What others? The vigil. What vigil? It is a vigil of devotion to Our Lady for the purpose of preserving the Latin Mass on Mount Coombe and here on the island of Mark. The other monks have gone to bed. I have sent them to bed. Why did you do that, Father Abbott? Because I am in charge here. Father Matthew, it is now some time since I've had to rebuke you. The last thing I want is to reopen our disagreements of former days. But there is work to be done tomorrow. You will please go to your bed. I have made a solemn promise to Our Lady to hold a vigil in her honor this night. When you were ordained as a monk, you made a solemn promise to God to obey your superiors. Go to bed. May I ask then, Father Abbot? What is your decision about the continuance of the Latin Mass on Mount Coombe? I have been informed by Rome that the Mass is now to be regarded as a symbolic ritual. That is heresy, pure and simple. Why is it heresy, Matthew? Because the Mass is the daily miracle of the Catholic faith. Bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Without that, what is the Church? So our belief in Jesus Christ and his Church depends upon a belief in miracles. Is that it, Matthew? Of course that is it. St. Augustine said, I should not be a Christian, but for the miracles. Without a miracle, Christ did not rise from his tomb and ascend into heaven. And without that, there would be no Christian church. Our visitor brings us an order from our Father General in Rome. Would you obey that order if it instructed you to consider the Mass not as a miracle, but simply as a pious ritual? And far be it from me to speak against my superiors, but 
I am ashamed to hear that talk coming from you and under God's roof. Ah, you know. But on the other hand, it seems you're not ashamed to act against the orders of your superior, even to the point of organizing the other monks to disobedience. I do not consider that I have been disobedient to our rule. You were told there would be no special observances tonight. I acted according to my conscience, Father Abbott. Hold your tongue and go to your cell. I want you in front of the chapter at supper time tomorrow to apologize for your behavior. I've had enough of you all these years, Matthew. Insolence and insubordination is against every vow you took when you became a monk. You should be ashamed. Since you ask me to apologize, Father Abbott, I humbly apologize. And since you ordered me to retire, I obey your order. Morning, Father. Morning. Come on and we'll, uh, we'll put a bit of breakfast into you. The Father Abbott was supposed to meet me here this morning. Ah, uh, yes. Well, he's, he's been a bit delayed, you see. Well, you know, there's a storm coming up. I'll have to make a decision about the helicopter. Yes, that's right. Well, he knows all about that. Come on. <coughs> uh, come in. Ah, uh, good day. Good day. Morning. One egg or two. Oh, one's fine. Sit you down here now. Uh, I'm going to get some bread and jam. For the business. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't bother. I'm all right. Look, I wish you'd try to find Flower Abbott for me, please. Uh, yes. Well, I'll leave it to your breakfast, so... There you are now. Oh. I hope you enjoy that. I'm sure. Thank you. I hope that egg is fresh. There are old hens here. They've not been laying well lately. Father Abbott. Mm. Brother Pius, if you please, get back to your work. I am working. There's a great curiosity here. The walls not only have ears, they have tongs as well. Well, uh, shall we go outside? I'll finish your breakfast. It's all right, I'm not hungry. You know about the storm. Oh, yeah. You could be trapped here for days. 
A terrible fate for a go-getter like yourself. It's all right. I've ordered your helicopter. It'll be here within the hour. You ordered it? Brother Pius and Brother Malachi, who's in there with you? Nobody in town. Get back to your work, then. They're like wireless sets all tuned in. Let's take a walk. Oh. There are sins of avoidance, sins of omission, times when it becomes a matter of conscience to act. What about the sin of pride? Now look, our poverty, our chastity, our obedience, three small gifts that we've offered God when we became monks of this order. And now you're going to ask God to give you back the last of these. But we're doing holy work. Coming here in this helicopter, telling us to stop. No. No, I must go down there. Don't. You know, I think that God sends down more trials on you than he does on the rest of us, because he knows that you want to prove your love for him. But perhaps he's testing you now, asking you to wait. I'm not being willful. But surely I must do what I know is right. Surely my conscience doesn't lie to me. And does your conscience tell you that you must break our law of obedience? Well, God doesn't make slaves of us. Every one of us has the right to choose. And if you're sure that it's his will, that you go down there now and do whatever it is you're going to do, I certainly shan't stop you. Go on, then. Go on. Here is a letter of apology to Father General. I have not sealed it. You may read it if you wish. But last night, you said you felt you had no right to interfere with the beliefs of your congregation. I was in error. You promised to give up the Latin Mass at once, yet you give no reasons. And here is my letter of resignation. I've asked to be transferred to another monastery. Not as an abbot, but as an ordinary monk. But why? Is it because you're unwilling to carry out Father General's order? The order will be carried out at once. There will be no trouble. Well, what about the crowds on the mainland and the monks here? Of course there'll be trouble. If we do not say the Latin Mass on the mainland, the people cannot attend it. As for the monks, I am their abbot. They will do as I tell them. But why do you want to resign? Because I was wrong. I had no right to tamper with people's faith. I think you're being too hard on yourself. Everybody makes mistakes, and yours were made with the best of intentions. Intentions don't count. Actions do. Remember Martin Luther? Insubordination is the beginning of the breakdown of the church. And I have been insubordinate. I don't believe that, Father Abbott. I um, overheard you lecture Father Matthew last night on the vow of obedience. That was spoken from the heart. Well, it's easy to lecture others. In my own case, I've gone against the orders of my superiors. But there's no need for you to resign. You're a holy man and a good man, and you're needed here. Your duty is here as the abbot of Mork. No, I've come to the end of a long road. I disagree, Father Abbot, and as Father General's plenipotentiary, I order you to stay. You can tear this up. There's something I must explain to you. Your helicopter will be here in a few minutes. Let's go up and get your bag. We can talk on the way. I did not do this for holy reasons. I did it because I myself lack conviction. There's a file on me in Rome. There's a file about my visit to Lourdes. You've read it. Yes, I have. But it doesn't explain. I'll tell you now what happened. I went there with two priests. We were on our way to Rome, and we stopped off to visit the shrine. A pious pilgrimage. The shrine of Our Lady at Lourdes in France. 
The place where the Virgin Mary was supposed to appear before an ignorant peasant girl. A place where people come from all over the world because they believe that God's mother will ask her son to cure them. Those poor sick people. Blind children, men without arms or legs, dying women on stretchers. Every deformity, every mortal ill. And all of them praying for a miracle, spending their life savings to get there. Oh, it's a sad, dreadful sight. I stood at the shrine, Father, and something came over me. I went back to the hotel and shut myself up and knelt down and tried to pray. I tried to pray. It's not the first time I've had this trouble. Even before Lourdes, sometimes here on the island, I've gone to church and started to say the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven. But then I've looked at the altar and I know that there is no Father in heaven. That's a pitiful thought, don't you think? A man who became a monk with most of his life gone. Kneeling in church and staring at the altar and knowing that there is nothing on the altar but wafers of communion bread. Not God. Just pieces of bread. When that would happen, when the words were just words, I'd begin to tremble and shake as a prelude to hell. I suppose you'd call it a depression, I call it hell, an empty state. The hell of a priest deprived of God. And when I get into that state, it's, oh, it's weeks, it's months, and I never know when I'm going to come out again. After Lourdes, it was nearly a year. So now I'm afraid to pray. You see, I don't know if I'll come out again. You uh, don't pray, ever? No, not for a long time. Not for years. Well, what about saying mass or your daily office? Does no one notice? It's strange, but they don't. One can pretend a preference for private devotion. But public prayers, well, there are plenty of monks who lead them. Then why have you stayed? It's a hard life, you said so yourself. But it's my life. I'm a sort of foreman here, a sort of manager. It's not far different from a secular job. The monks work hard. I'm here to keep them together. See, they make a go of it. We're like children. It's a simple life. We pass the days as if there was an endless supply of them. So, you see, you didn't know what sort of a man you were asking to stay on as abbot. Travel light. It's the best way. Let's go down to the field. I want to get you off before I face up to them. You're expecting trouble? No. The thing about being in charge is to be firm, like Father General and yourself. By the way, what shall I say when the press and television people come around? You can refer all inquiries to me in Rome. I will do that.
Let me deal with them. Don't you say anything. Have you word for us now, Father Abbott? Are the horses brought up from the lower field? They are. May I ask our visitor just one question? You may not. Let us pass. There is a holy man, but he's also very tiresome. There are those that can cause trouble, but there are also those who are troubled. You have both letters, Father. When will you let me know of my replacement? So be it. Safe home, Father. Safe journey. Thank you, Father. Can you tell us now? The visitor is gone. Our visitor is gone. I am ashamed of you. Are we religious men or are we hooligans? I'm sorry, Father Abbott. I think we're all sorry. But can you tell us now? What's going to happen? Yes, I can tell you now. We have had orders from Father General in Rome. From now on, the Mass will be said in English in the new manner, the altars facing the congregation. I have written to Father General telling him we will do as he says. That is all. That is all? We have had our orders. It is up to all of us to carry them out to the best of our ability, isn't it? I'm sure we will do that, will we not? And the first thing we'll do is all of us get straight back to work now. And that is not the half of it, Father Abbott. Why have you not told the community what you told me last night? Last night, I told you to go to bed. Now, I tell you to go to work. You also told me we are no longer instructed to believe in the miracle of the Mass. That is so. Then how can a thing be a miracle one day and not a miracle the next day? I don't know. Maybe you are a greater theologian than the Pope or the Vatican Council, Father Matthew. I am not. I am a monk, and I do as I am bid. No! No, no! Oh, Donald. He blasphemed me! No, 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 Donald, no, 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 you're not well. You're Sacrilege, not just, I can't be here now, enough, no! Now, take control no. of yourself. Now, all of you get back to work now. No, wait, wait, I will not be put off. I will not be ordered to believe something which I do not believe. No one can order belief. It is a gift from God. 
Look, what he's proposing is a denial of everything the Mass stands for. Please. Let us go into the church. A miracle is when God comes here into this church among us. But you said the opposite. You said the sacrifice of the Mass is just ritual, that the bread and wine remain bread and wine, that there are no miracles. Yes, prayer is the only miracle. We try to pray. If our words become prayer, God will come. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be be thy thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil.